Hi, today I'm going to talk about a variety of finishing techniques for these custom Gloomhaven health and XP trackers. Hi, welcome to Gray Lightning, my video blog about making things and playing games. And this is the third and final episode in a series of deep dive videos about the techniques necessary to do this project, which is a custom Gloomhaven tracker. And uh, I did an overview of this whole process, and I'll put a link to that video in this video, but today I'm just going to focus on that final step, which is finishing the final printed pieces. And so I tried a variety of different techniques, some of which I was very happy with, and some of which um, I was disappointed with, but I'll, I'll share it all with you. So I have uh, things as different as dry brushing acrylic paints, using rub and buff to gild the design, uh, stamping on an acrylic, acrylic paint rolled on a gel plate. That's how these samples were done. And I had a lot of fun with gold leaf and uh, I had some successes and I had some temporary failures that I tried some more creative different things with like this and came out with some really interesting results. So I'm going to talk about how I did all this in this episode. In my last episode, I showed how I did two different colors of resin in a single print. And that's how this tracker top was made. But the main reason why I did two color printing was for the dials. And these black and white dials were done that way. And you can rotate them and that color will never wear off. But I wanted to investigate other finishing techniques for the tracker top, so I printed a bunch of white blanks to work with. I wanted to investigate a variety of finishing techniques that I've used in other projects. So the acrylic paints I'm going to use, and what I always use, are my Citadel paints that I use for painting my miniature models. I've got really good experience with these. The first technique I'm going to try is dry brushing and use these special brushes that are very dense and very short bristles for dry brushing. In miniature painting you use dry brushing to put color just on the raised edges. So I thought that that would be a good technique for this top where the whole design is raised. You work the paint deep into the bristles of the brush and then you basically dab off all of the excess paint to where nothing shows when you just touch it against a surface. But when you brush it repeatedly and lightly over a raised surface, it lays down paint. I use alcohol on a sponge to try to remove the paint that gets on the places I don't want it to be, but even with that effort, I am not happy with the results of dry brushing. So I move on to my next technique, which is using a gel plate to stamp the acrylic paint onto the raised surface and use a brayer to apply the paint evenly to the gel plate. Now I've used this technique successfully on my 3D printed tokens, so I have a lot of confidence that this is going to work. But even so, I run a test on some gray resin samples I have just to see that it works in this dial turned out pretty well, so I had confidence. I moved on to my first white sample of the top. Now the actual Gloomhaven tracker is half red and half blue. But in my first attempt, I obviously pressed too hard because it was all red, not just the design. So I tried to clean that off and I went to a new fresh sample and I started again. And first I stamped the blue, that worked out pretty well. You clean the gel plate off with uh, baby wipes and of course the brayer too. Now I'm gonna try the red paint and I'm, I'm going for an overlap in the middle, just like on the Gloomhaven tracker where it's kind of purple in the middle. So I stamp and it turns out pretty well. I do a little bit of touch up on a places that aren't covered as well as I'd like them to be. I also use my alcohol and my little sponge applicators to try to clean it up. And basically I'm pretty happy with this. I would consider the stamping exercise to be a success. While I'm at it, I also stamped some of the number dials in black because I want to see how well this holds up in use compared to the two color resin samples that I already 
uh, showed how to do. You'll see I'm stamping each one three times on a fresh part of the gel plate. Another technique for applying color to a raised surface is rub and buff. And this comes in these small tubes. It's basically a colored wax. It's mostly about a metallic effect. It's really gilding. And so the colors that are available are kind of limited. I decided to test this on a failed stamping sample that you could see the red and blue there, but this is so um, opaque that you can really apply it over another color and it will cover well. I'm testing a couple of different golds, a silver and a reddish gold. It's hard to really see though how well it can do on this sample, so I put a little bit on an extra white where the design wasn't quite raised enough. And I felt from this little test that it had some potential, but I thought there was a much better way to get gold metallic. And that's from one of my very favorite techniques, and that's gold leaf. So the way you apply gold leaf is first you put down a sizing. And I'm going to use my brayer and gel plate to do that. And I really, sizing's just a thin glue. And you stamp it on, and you have to set it aside and let it dry completely before going on to the next step. And of course, I very quickly clean off the sizing from the gel plate and the brayer. When it's completely dry, I put the top inside a container because gold leaf is really messy to work with and you have to contain it as much as possible. You also see I'm using gloves because it'll stick to anything, anything that's not completely dry. So you tap it all down with a big fat soft bristle brush and then you take a little bit stiffer brush and you brush it away and it's supposed to come away from the stuff that doesn't have sizing applied to it. But it doesn't work and I realized it's because even a fully cured piece of resin has a little bit of residual tackiness to it. So this should only be sticking to the raised design but you see it's sticking all over the flat parts of the design as well. So one of my basic philosophies is a failure is just an opportunity to experiment. So I pulled out these gilding flakes. Now this is gold leaf that is all these little small torn pieces of gold leaf in different colors. And I use my sponge applicator to apply sizing to all the flat parts that I didn't want it to stick to before, now I want this to stick. I also apply the sizing to all the edges. Now if applying gold leaf is messy, I would say using gilding flakes is really chaotic because you're just dropping them in randomly onto the spots where the sizing is. I actually use my gloved hands to make sure that all of the edges are adhered as well as possible. And then I get out my stiffer brush and I start brushing away the leaf from the places that I don't want it to be. And it kind of goes from chaos to something pretty cool. All the excess leaf brushes away and you're left with a very smooth, but in this case, multicolored surface. I used tweezers to find little red and blue pieces and put them over the two symbols. The design is covered with the original rose gold leaf. I decided to give the rose gold leaf another try, so I printed a new top and now I printed it in a flesh colored resin because I thought that was closer to the color of the gold leaf I would be applying. I understand now that the only way this technique works is to completely cover the surface with the leaf. I use the gel plate to apply the sizing to the design and then my little applicator to put it everywhere else. Then I set it aside and let it dry completely. My container is getting a little messy so I put a little tray inside to raise up the piece. I put a sheet of gold leaf on it and then I do my tap 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 to apply it. I use my hands to make sure it's also applied to all the edges and then I start brushing off the excess leaf. This is my favorite part because if you've done it right, it really does just clean up beautifully. I also search my gilding flakes for a little piece of red and a little piece of blue to put on the symbols, and here's the final result. While I had a few disappointments along the way, I think I've come up with a couple of really good results. 
I have a lot of great 3D printing projects ahead for gaming and gamers. If you're interested, please subscribe to my channel.